Hey everyone, this is Lucky70x. Welcome back to a brand new Let's Play. That's right, we're starting a new game today. A game that I think a lot of you actually have asked me for, and uh, it's been a long time since I've done a game of this series, and I've been itching to get back into the saddle. That being said, this is going to be an interesting project. If you guys uh, recognize which game this is, well, there's only really two DS Zelda games to pick from, and I've already done Spirit Tracks. This is uh, The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass, everyone. Very interesting game this series. It's actually one of my least favorite Zeldas to be. I'm just gonna be blatantly honest here to begin with. It's it's not one of my favorite Zelda games. That doesn't make it a bad game necessarily, because the Zelda game is my favorite series, don't forget. So a bad game of a good series is still a good game, generally. But um there are certain things about this game that are uh a bit weird. And we'll certainly uh, delve into that as we go through this Let's Play. But that being said, it's still a Zelda Let's Play, and I am hyped, and I am excited, and I am ready to go. And I hope you guys are as well. Let's touch the screen before it fades to white. Too late. It's too late to apologize. It's too late! Hey, look at practice file. Anyways, we're gonna start a new game. No, that's a silly name. That's a better name. Look at that, I didn't even type it out, it just gave it to me, because that's what my, my DS is called. Huzzah! Anyways, I'm lucky. I am right-handed. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the confirmation. I clearly know what I'm doing. Anyways, welcome to Phantom Hourglass, guys. Let's get this game started. Uh, battle mode is something that maybe could be showed off at some point, but I don't intend to, so let's go on an adventure. With a recap of Wind Waker, because if you guys don't know, this is the uh, sequel to Wind Waker and, I guess, the prequel to... Spirit. Well, I guess Spirit Tracks is the sequel to this game. So it goes Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks. Like... They're very direct sequels, unlike a lot of Zelda games which have like very th thinly veiled references. But uh, Wind Waker, if you guys haven't played that, there was a pirate named Tetra and they were... They were pirates. They went off on adventure. They were good pirates, like the One Piece pirates. But uh... They're handsome pirates, yes. Clearly they are, they are very handsome. But they got to se 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 sail the seas and they met Le meet Link and... He apparently has a really derpy smile that goes all the way up to his eyeball. That can't be healthy. Then again, so does Tetra. The one guy in the left's just like, man, this guy's cramping my style. I'm sorry, Orange Pirate. We can't help it if I'm so if Link's so fabulous. Hey, wasn't it like a gay magazine, like a you know a magazine for you know not to use I guess you know homosexual, gay, whatever. I don't, I don't know if like one term is supposed to be politically correct or not. But isn't there something me a magazine that like voted Link the most handsome video game character? I mean, he is a pretty handsome guy, orange guy. Don't be upset. Anyway, Tetris is pretty as Zelda. Let's get back on topic because I'm very good at doing that. And uh that's racist. Just because he's evil doesn't mean he has to be black game. Also, Link is just like, holy shoot! And Zelda's like, holy fuzzballs! And it's just, I love, this, this little storyboard cutscenes are just kind of amusing. So, uh, Gandorf steals the princess, blah blah blah. I mean, Windmaker didn't have the most, uh, very plot. You know, in the end it just kind of boiled down to Gandorf kidnaps Zelda, Link kills Ganondorf, Link and Zelda live happy alley ever after the end. Except not the end, because now we're in Phantom Hourglass, and, um... Other stories. I like all the little uh, musical remakes, though. They they're, they're a nice little touch. Anyways, yay for cutscenes that take like five minutes to introduce a game that we don't even re that it really isn't referenced for the rest of the game that much. Also, now now that I've like now that I actually own the Zelda mangas, like I actually went and bought a box set of that at Magfest a few months ago. Uh, it's really hard to play the game, the Zelda games that actually are referenced in the manga without thinking of the manga constantly. So, way to go, Japanese culture. Way to ruin your own game series. Well, or, or enhance it. Depends on your perspective, I suppose. I'm ranting because this cutscene takes freaking forever! Stop! Please! Link, that smile is literally onto your, into your eyeball there. Like, literally, it is inside your eye. You are smiling with your eyeball. It's kinda creepy. That can't be healthy. You'd smile, all your eye fluids just kind of leak out, and now we're just going to gross territory. Anyways, it's a shame that the, that graphical style isn't the entire game, right? So this guy's like, hey, I have paper cutouts. Did you guess that Tetra's really Princess Zelda? Yeah, and Link's just like, dude, I did this story. I don't give a shit, man. So, uh, or well, Lucky. His name is Lucky now, because I'm better than Link. 
Anyways, so this picks up basically on a Link, you know, joins Tetra for her adventures, and, well, we're gonna go on an adventure! Pirate adventure, yeah! So, uh, Tetra being as bossy as always, Link being as derpy as always, he's... One thing I do like about this game is it does, it, 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 it I mean, Spirit Tracks does it better, but Spirit Tracks came afterwards, so you have to give it credit, but this game does have some pretty awesome expression from a mute character. I mean, Link kind of has personality in this game, I do dig that. Wind Waker Link is just kind of... He's just, he just kind of doesn't really know what the heck he's doing, he just succeeds anyway. Tetra doesn't like to be called Zelda, seems to be kind of made fun of that. For, I mean, if you're a brash pirate and all of a sudden you're a princess, probably wouldn't really approve that so much. So, um... Basically, the plot of this game revolves from the fact that they want to go find the ghost ship. So, uh, they're looking out for a creepy ship. As always... This is, this is Nico, right? He's like the old guy from Spirit Tracks, because he lives like a hundred years. But, uh... So, the ghost ship, they're looking to see that, according to Tetra, she thinks it's a, oh, so spooky. Um, we're, we're, we're off here to investigate the ghost ship, basically, that's, that's the plan. So, and also, these waters were protected by a spirit called the Ocean King. Obviously, I mean, they're in blue letters, they're obviously important and relevant to the plot, so. Protected by the Ocean King, evil ghost ship, so on and so forth. So we're gonna go investigate that and see what happens. And there are rules to being pirates, like raping and pillaging. Anyway, Link's hero senses are tingling though, because well, we may have bitten off a little bit more than we can chew per se. So uh, everything seems all dark and foggy. Tetra though, being headstrong, she doesn't care about the dark spookiness. She wants to take face this ghost ship head on and see what happens. And well, she gets her wish. That's a creepy ship. That's a very creepy ship. That's the ghost ship. You can tell because it has a skull on it, signifying ghosts. And if your ship doesn't have a skull on the head, it's not a ghost ship, it's just a ship. Add the skull, then you have ghost. Plus one skull, plus 100 maximum ghostage points. Oh god, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna quit while I'm behind. So, uh, anyways, we come across the ghost ship in this creepy fog. It's fairly creepy. And, uh, Nico panicking as always. But, uh, Tetra wants the treasure because that's what she wants. I really want, like, a Tetra Toon Zelda, by the way, for the Smash Brothers. That's something I want to see happen. And Tetra got in trouble again. And everyone's just like, oh, well. <laughs> He's just like, well, crap. <laughs> Ghost ship is real, guys. GG. Tetra's dead. And Link, though, has to be a hero and save her butt. Jumps, but doesn't quite have the physical prowess to get up there like Tetra does. And uh, his grip ain't so good. He tries to make it on, but uh, he falls into the ocean. Tedra has been kidnapped by the ghost ship, and Link has drowned. The end! Game over! No, of course not. So, uh... Base, it's, I mean, it's a fairly basic plot. Tetra gets kidnapped again, so essentially it's the same as always. We have to go rescue Princess Zelda again. But that's okay, because you know what? I don't even care of the plots like that. It's At least it's not Ganondorf. So she's trapped in this ghost ship and uh, swallowed in darkness. What are we going to do? Well, what happened to us to begin with? That's the important part. We need to answer that question first. And the answer to that question is, oh god, no! No! Stop! Good. None of that Navi bullshit. But unfortunately, we do have Navi bullshit. Meet Navi 2.0! Oh god. I can't. I can't even. No. Stop. So, uh, because, you know, we loved Navi in the first place. That's That was a thing. So, uh, looks like we're going to be okay, though. That's good. Meet Celia. I, I'm assuming that's how you pronounce her name. I'm probably completely wrong, as always. But, yeah, it's a fairy. Yeah, fairy partners. That, I, I mean, I, I, you know, honestly, honestly, though, real talk, real talk. I never really thought Navi was that annoying. Actually, I really don't think most of the part. I, I even like Fee, okay? So I guess I just have extreme par partner tolerance, but seriously, not that bad. 
yeah, she kind of gets... Celia's a little annoying and obnoxious, but I can I can deal with her. She's not the worst partner. So our friend was taken by the ghost ship. We are we washed up on this island. Um, we've been separated from our, our crew. So what are we going to do? Or we're going to have to find a way to get to this ghost ship. At least they know what it is. At least um, this land recognizes it. The ghost ship apparently patrols these waters. Grandpa! Well, we're going to go talk to this fairy's grandpa. Well, adoptive grandfather. She uh, has no memories, so look at that. A partner with amnesia. That's been used before. Anyway. So welcome to Phantom Hourglass, guys. We finally get some gameplay. Roughly 11 minutes into the video. Isn't that wonderful? So just like Spirit Tracks, you move around by... Well, I guess technically this is the first game to do this, but... You move around using the stylus. So, which actually, Celia this time is the point of your stylus. So now you guys can see wherever my stylus is. Uh, so you can run around, you can do little roll things to roll in the trees if you want to. Um, and basically, you just kind of have a good time. I'm Link, I can roll as I please, and if you roll four times, you get dizzy, which is fun. But, uh, yeah, welcome to, I think, Murkay Island is the name of this. Hey, ho there, friend, I'm going to tap on you to speak to you, because that's how it works. Um, you can also tap on things like chickens to pick them up and throw them in- No, I want, no, chicken! I'm gonna start this game off properly. I'm gonna throw a chicken into the ocean. That's the only way you can start off Phantom Hourglass. Damn it, chicken! Damn you! Ha-ha! <laughs> Victory at last! I have defeated the chicken of evil! The world is saved. The end. Anyway, so we got a few residents we can talk to, but uh, for the most part, we can't explore most of this island yet, because uh, it's a tutorial island. That's just kind of how it works. Hearts are health, as always, in a Zelda game, and if we ever get a rupee, that will be our currency, as always. It's a Zelda game. Hey, you're alive! Go away! So, um, you can pick up rocks as well. It's just, you know, just basic controls. So, let's actually get the plot. Although, if you try to go anywhere else, such as over here, Navi, I mean, Celia, is just kind of like, No! Go talk to Grandpa! And we're like, okay, fine, we'll go talk to Grandpa. So, we go talk to Grandpa! Meet Grandpa! Also known as, uh, I think he has a name, doesn't he? What's your name? Hello! I'm Lucky! He's, okay, yeah, sorry, he's Ocious. Kind of like Ocean, get it? Get it? Get it? They always do those kind of punny things. So, uh, apparently Celia somehow has already told us him about everything, even though she's been our stylist this whole time. But, uh, our friend's been taken by the ghost ship. Hey! Hey, bro! Bro! I defeated Gandorf, I saved the world, I can do whatever I please. I'm not a noob, sir. I am a total pro. So, uh, but unfortunately he doesn't really know that. And, you know, ghost ship scary! Link is out of practice, I guess. That's why he has three arts instead of 20 from Wind Waker. It's kind of always a little weird when it's the same Link. Because, you know, there's always that sort of discrepancy. Video game logic! So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, you know, to seek out that ship and seek up, uh, see our doom, we have to do something! Yeah, we totally are going to do something. We're going to go do it! Look how determined I am! Look at that determined face. Unblinking. Fake-looking eyes. Although the Wind Waker style is always kind of silly, but like I said, I do like this version of Link. I really do. This version of Link is actually kind of cool. There's some there's some funny cutscenes that do happen in this game. Although I will admit I'm not nearly as familiar with this game as I am as I am with Spirit Tracks, so I'm a bit outdated. But Linebeck, we kind of met him a little bit in Spirit Tracks, or a descendant of him. But um, he's actually the one of the main characters of this game, and he is an interesting fellow that makes this game interesting. So. Uh, we have to head to the harbor. That's our first uh, mission. He knows more about the ghost ship. He might be our only salvation to rescuing t uh, Tetra. So, uh, Celia, eager as always. She's uh, She wants to go accompany us on our journey, as always. We, I mean, you need a fairy. It's still their tradition, kind of, in certain games. So, uh, Oshis gives her his blessing, and uh, we have our fairy partner. Look how, look, how, look how excited she is. She is a very hyper fairy. So... Link's just like, well, this is gonna get annoying, isn't it? So, uh, unfortunately, there's been very monster, many monster things. We don't have any equipment. We washed up kind of in our clothing, and that's just about it. So, uh, my, he, I mean, Osh doesn't really approve. He's like, he's, he's really hesitant to us, uh, going and doing dangerous things. I mean, we're the hero of oceans, or whatever the heck you are in the free. Hey, rupees! Um, hey, Oshis! Hey, Oshis! Hey, hey, eat pot! <laughs> Ironic because I'm recording this on 420. Anyways, um, so we head over here to head to the port, but an earthquake happens. Well, that sounds dangerous. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Hey, hey, listen. Hey. 
So, unfortunately, the earthquake destroys the bridge, so we can't actually get across there that way. And the only other way is, uh, through a frightening cave full of monsters. Well, unfortunately, we're not going to really get very far unless we have something to defend ourselves. So, uh, well, we'll have to figure it out. Because if we head over here, yep. Monsters! We, we don't have a way to defend- we don't have anything to defend ourselves. We have to turn back! Well, actually, you kind of do, because eventually if you head over this way for too long, uh, you will encounter bushes that you need a sword to cut. So we need to get ourselves a sword. Unfortunately, this game doesn't really give you that much indication- get out of here, monsters- of where to get this sword. <laughs> but, uh, there is a way to get it. First of all, let's go talk to Oshis. Um, we'll- we'll go ahead and, and chat with him a bit and tell him about the earthquake, so... Oh, he's, he's, he's a little bit overprotective, this old man. He, uh, he's, I mean, I appreciate his concern, but... Yeah, we'll, we'll be careful, sir. And, uh, basically his advice is to wait. However, we're not gonna wait because the plot says we shouldn't. The plot says we should go be a hero and be hasty. Hey, listen. So, uh, we need to find a sword. Well... Um, yeah, you can see the map is the top screen. I haven't really mentioned that yet, but I'm, I'm sure you've seen this. Um, there's actually a cave right here if you look at the map, at that map, and we actually can access. Is there anything on this tree? No. This tree is a waste of time. So let's go ahead and enter said cave and see what's inside. For inside here is the sword we're looking for, basically. Just spoilers right there. It's this storehouse, and well, there we go. She pretty much blatantly says that was a spoiler of about five seconds. So, uh, in order to get this door open, he writes a number on the sign. So this is kind of introducing them. This game uses a lot of the whole DS, like, writing things in. Um, it definitely uses a lot more of the map puzzles that Spirit Tracks did as well. Which is one of the cool things I like about the DS games, the whole, like, having to write things in your map and having to remember things and figure out things. Um, it's kind of interesting thing. So you can kind of go here. Oh, just does not approve of us writing things. So it's the number of palm trees on the island. That's the hint that Celia gives us. So, um... Let's go count the palm trees. It's kind of intro to Zelda puzzles, because we have a lot of sort of puzzles like this. So, if you start from right to left, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's right, seven palm trees. It's like destiny! Also, if you go over, if you go over here, um, this guy actually does have a mission for us, so... Um, the earthquake actually had a bunch of rocks uh, go in here, so we're gonna go ahead and break these rocks by throwing them at the chicken! That's right. I abuse chickens! Oh, I missed. Do oh, I missed! <laughs> Thanks to plenty for beating the shit out of my chicken! Have some money! Wow. Gee. Thanks. I appreciate it. But luckily, uh, he'll actually give us a hot tip. If you look at the map, there is a tree at the spot on the map here. So, if we go to our menu and go to map, we can, like, just like Spare Tracks, write things in the map. So, we're gonna make a little squiggly wiggly here. And be like, hey, there's something over here. So we're gonna bash that tree, uh, probably next episode. But, uh, if we, basically it's, hey, intro to remembering things by writing them on your map. So that's a thing, but now we know how many palm trees you need, so let's go grab our sword, and we'll probably call it an episode once we get the sword, just because it already has been almost 20 minutes, so. I mean, most of it's cutscene, but it is intro episode, so what do you expect? So, yes, yes, I know. The, the palm trees and the you you've mentioned this already, so let's go ahead and uh, draw a nice little seven on here. Really, that didn't count. Is that a seven enough for you? There we go. Don't question me how to write sevens. I'm lucky seven DX. I am the master of seven. Silly game. Silly game. Tricks are for kids. Hey, more money. Stealing all of Oshis's money because he's a douche. So, uh, little tips on the drawing, your, doing the sword. We're actually gonna learn a bit of sword play though, already, because uh, it's like we never handled a sword before. It's not like Wind Waker never happened. But we get Oshis' sword, so we now have a sword, we can defend ourselves, and uh, we're pissing off Grandpa. Better not tell him that we have a sword. Gee, I hope he doesn't know that we're in his storehouse stealing his shit. It would be really inconvenient if he was right outside. Oh shit. Ha, <laughs> Oshis, oh, oh shit. I like it. Anyways, um. So, yeah, we have a sword. I'm sorry, but we need to go be a hero now, Grandpa. Please let us go be a hero. There's a time and place for everything, but not now! Soon he'll just be asking us if we're a boy or a girl. 
Anyway, he's gonna teach us some swordplay. So he gives in to our to our heroness, and it's time to learn some swordplay. So, hey, we have a sword, but uh, we're gonna learn the basics on how to use a sword, and sword, 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 to sword, and sword, sword. So, first of all, the jump attack. It's a uh, just like spare tracks. Everything's gonna be very similar to spare tracks in that the jump attack is basically just tap on a target, and you can uh, jump and attack enemies. So. Definitely the attack we'll use the most. Otherwise, you have a slash if you just sort of draw a line instead. So you can do kind of slashes like this. They're a bit slower to use, but they can be handy in close uh, circumstances. They're a bit... Your jump attack generally needs a little bit of distance. It does more damage, though, so the jump attack is generally better. And then otherwise, you have a spin attack. You just draw a circle around yourself, and you will spin and destroy the targets near you. It's actually quite wonderful. So that's all you can really teach us, but that's all, all we really need to know, so... Uh, we are ready to take on the monsters and go meet this lineback fellow and learn about the ghost ship. But, uh, unfortunately, I think, uh, we're gonna go ahead and call it an episode here because it has been 20 minutes, like I said, and, uh, we'll save the heroine for next time. Although, this episode wouldn't be complete without beating the shit out of a chick- Nope. A chicken! Get over here! Yes! So, yeah, if you had chicken enough, chicken, chickens. Chickens every well, c cuckoos. They're called cuckoos. So, uh, but they they do the usual attacking things. So, stupid chicken. Anyways, for that, for now, guys, we're gonna end the episode here. So this is Lucky Seven X signing out. I'll see you guys in the next episode where we take on uh, this cave to the north, full of monsters, and see what's up with Linebeck. So, uh, yeah, welcome to the project, guys. Hope you guys enjoy Phantom Hourglass. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.